Okay, now that we've imported our media, you can see over here in the project window that um, it gives you all kinds of information about that media. Um, all this information over here is called metadata. And uh, basically it'll tell you certain parameters about a clip. So over here, I've got the name of that clip. So this one's called 5-3, in parentheses, letter F. Um, and then if I scroll over, I can see my frame rate. So this was shot at 24p or 23976, uh, same thing. It gives me my start and end time code. So uh, this clip started at 15 seconds, 19 frames, and it ended at, at 20 seconds and 21 frames, which gives me about a five second clip, which you can see over here in my media duration column, five seconds and three frames. If you go a little further, you've got in points and out points, which I'll talk about in the source book window in one second. Uh, video info, that's your uh, frame size, aspect ratio, resolution. So what this is giving you is saying like, oh, okay, this clip is 1920 by 1080, so 1080p. And then over here, it gives you a pixel aspect ratio. Uh, but most stuff is, is gonna be 1.0. Uh, pixels are one to one square, uh, usually. Uh, then you've got audio info, 48,000 kilohertz, 16 bit, a mono, and a whole bunch of other columns you're not uh, really ever going to use or look at. But th uh, there is one column I want you to add onto this that is not currently represented, and that is video usage. So go ahead and take your mouse into this empty space uh, next to name and right click or control click. And that'll pull up this metadata display button. And then in this window, if I come up into the search box, this just gives you tons and tons of stuff you're never gonna look at. But if I search for video usage and check that box there and click okay, and actually scroll to the end now, almost to the end. Uh, I'll see I have a new column called video usage. And uh, basically what that is, is it'll tell you if a clip is already on your timeline, if you've already used that clip in your video and how many times you have. So if you're working on a project with a lot of clips um, and you can't recall if you used a clip or not, this becomes very useful so that you aren't reusing clips over and over again. So always add that. Once you add it once, it should stay in your Premiere every single time, uh, but know how to get it there in case it ever disappears. Okay, so up in the top of your project window, you've got a bunch of tabs here. Uh, the only one, well, I guess there's two more that you'll use. First one is your media browser. And I'll talk about the media browser in a different video when I talk about subclipping, but this is a different way to import video into Premiere that'll become very important on later projects. Libraries I've never used before, info and effects. Uh, the effects tab is all your different kinds of video effects that are built into Premiere. And uh, I'll show you how to add that to clips when we talk about the timeline. Markers and history. This works a lot like Photoshop, but it'll just give you a, a history of everything you've done in Premiere. So most important things here are project, uh, media browser and effects. Okay, so uh, once you're ready to start looking at your footage, all you have to do is double click on the clip that you want to look at. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on our first one here, 5-3F. And when you double click on a clip, it'll open up in your source window. Okay, the source window is a preview window. Uh, basically, you're just looking at that clip, seeing what's in it. And it's also a way to trim down your clips. So uh, let's say, this clip's a little long, right? It's five seconds long, and this uh, is supposed to be a promo for the TV show Leverage. So let's say, instead of starting the clip with her walking up, I would rather it start here. Okay, um, and I can choose that point and navigate to that point in a few ways. I can, just like I just did, I can take my mouse and click on my playhead here. This little blue guy is called a playhead. And I can click that and drag to, uh, to uh, different parts of the clip. I, I can also hit play and stop. There are also keyboard shortcuts. So the keyboard shortcut to play is pretty obvious. It's the same thing in iTunes and Spotify and everything, it's just spacebar. So if I hit, the, hit that spacebar, it, it'll play the clip back at normal speed. 
Um, there are also uh, keyboard shortcuts for fast forward and rewind. So if I want to play and I'm like, oh no, I passed the spot I wanted to uh, create my endpoint, I can hit J on the keyboard and that'll rewind. I can also hit it a couple of times and it'll rewind in fast motion. All right, so if I have this here and I hit JJ, it'll be faster. And the uh, more times I hit J, the faster it'll, re it'll rewind. And then I can also do that with fast forward, which is the letter L on the keyboard. So if I hit L, it'll play back at normal speed at normal motion, hit L a couple more times, and it'll play back even faster. So if I hit LL, it plays back at twice speed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then K in between J and L is uh, stop. Uh, it doesn't play though. It'll only stop your clip. So, so I really only use spacebar. So now that I, uh, let's say I want to start my clip right here. She's already at the railing, but she hasn't opened up her notebook yet. So to tell Premiere, okay, I, I don't want to use this entire clip on my timeline. I only want to use the part that starts here. I'm going to create an, an endpoint. To create an endpoint, you hit letter I on the keyboard. And then it'll come up with a little blue line and gray out everything beyond that endpoint. Okay, so that's telling it I'm going to trim this first part of the clip out and start my clip there. It's not deleting anything. All the footage is still here, and I can change that endpoint as many times as I want and put it in a, in a different place. I just have to keep hitting I. Um, so don't feel like it's being destructive at all. All right, let's, let me go ahead and put my endpoint back where I wanted it. So right there is where I'm going to start my clip. And then let's say I want to end the clip here. Okay, so not the whole clip. I just want to end it a little bit early. Um, I can create an out point, right? I create an in point. Now I'm going to create an out point. To create an out point, the keyboard shortcut is O on the keyboard. So I'm going to hit O. And it creates the same thing. It, it creates this a blue line. And uh, uh, now the only part of the clip that's grayed out is what's between my in point and my out point. So now that I've trimmed a clip, um, I, can, I can go ahead and add that to my timeline. To do that, um, all you got to do is click in the, in the middle here, in the middle of the video, click there, and drag that down onto your timeline uh, window. And it'll pop up with all this new stuff. And what you, what you see down here, if I hit spacebar again to play, is exactly the clip that you brought down, only between my in point and my out point. Okay. So uh, next video, I will talk about the program window and the timeline window.